Good morning and welcome everyone. My name is Maria Tranquilli and I'm a program manager at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. For those of you who may not know, the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center is a nonprofit dedicated to enabling entrepreneurs from all over the world to realize their maximum potentials and grow. We will open up for live Q&A at the end of this event. Please submit your questions in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen throughout the presentation. And none of this would be possible without the amazing support from our sponsors. We're humbled by their contributions. During these unique times, we are very curious around sentiment and how you are feeling as entrepreneurs within our community. We'd like to start by taking a few polls to see how you are doing. Poll number one, how are you currently feeling? Fearful, anxious, surviving, optimistic? Please let us know. It looks like we have a lot of people feeling like they are surviving. Thank you for filling in the chat. It looks like some people are feeling optimistic as well. Poll number two, what type of entrepreneur are you? Are you an entrepreneur that's currently in business? Are you an aspiring entrepreneur? Or perhaps you hold a different position in your company? Looks like we have aspiring entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs in business, and others in our audience today. Thank you so much for joining us. And finally, what is keeping you up at night? Is it finance, sales, marketing, scaling, pivoting, your team, or surviving? Okay, it looks like we have quite a few people surviving today. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Without further delay, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Christine Alamany, CEO of TGA. Christine, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Can everybody see the screen? I want to make sure. Um, so today we're going to talk about how we can find fully and marketing um, during the pandemic. Um, a little bit about me, I've been doing um, marketing in the startup world for about 10 plus years. I've been marketed through a couple of recessions. Um, I've been on leadership teams at um, Fortune 500 uh, companies like Dell, United Technologies, Citibank. Um, I've also uh, started up in the startup world about 20 years ago and decided to jump back into the startup world and it's been a ton of fun. So today what we're going to talk about are um, what the effects of COVID have been so far, um, how you can rethink your budget knowing where we are with COVID today, um, how you can pivot with your customers. So you can rethink about how you're doing things based on how they're doing things. Um, and then how do you prepare for the new normal? So we've been living in a pandemic world long enough that there's some data that we can actually do. So um, in April, a partner did a study on uh, with um, CFOs and you know, half of the respondents were projecting a decline of at least 10% in risk. 90% um, were expecting some kind of uh, negative impact. And so starting in April, a lot of um, companies in, in both large companies and startups started thinking about, okay, so how do I conserve cash? How do I start cutting costs um, to counter the, the revenue hit that I'm going to get? Um, and Christine, cash flow. Yeah. Christine, I just want to thank you so much. Hold on one moment. We're hearing from the audience that there is a little bit of static and it's a little bit hard to hear you. 
I'm wondering, oh, no. maybe adjust your microphone. Okay. Just to make sure because we have is a lot. Is this better? That is much better. Yes. And everyone, okay. let us know in the chat how that sounds. Let's see what everyone says. Yes, we're hearing that sounds better. Christine, can you speak a little bit more to make sure we're good? Yes. Okay. Are we good? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go back a little bit. So in April, um, Gartner did a survey of um, CFOs um, to see how they were being affected. 10% um, expected some kind of decline in revenues. 90% um, expected um, some kind of negative impact. Um, and so what they really started focusing on is cost cutting. Um, started modeling wor worst case cash scenarios to assess what the impact could be on cash position and they're re, um, revising it often. And so in June, Gartner did the same survey and they're finding one of the major areas that are being targeted for cost cutting is marketing, marketing and real estate. Um, one of the things that I want to point out is real estate is because remote work, remote working is working well and it, it directly affects your operational cost. It allows you to, to, to have that cash flow that you need. Um, in terms of marketing, we're seeing some areas of marketing spend being eliminated altogether um, in the near future, like events and conferences and stuff like that. Um, but we're also seeing shifts in spend um, happening. For example, mobile ad spend has increased um, quarter over quarter. So while marketing overall has, is, is an area, a cost cutting area, um, one of the things that you have to start thinking about is how do I market um, smarter, quicker, more efficiently? And I think the good news is that we're starting to see a uh, recovery. So what we're looking at here is um, the, the purchasing ma manager index. Um, and so what you're seeing is anything above 50 shows growth in the, in the economy, anything below 50 um, shows contraction. And what you're seeing here is um, there was some contraction. Um, businesses did get hit, are getting hit, um, but it's slowly turning around. Um, so while it's been challenging, we're seeing growth. Um, we're also in seeing employment growth. So, you know, on the pricing fund front, um, there's been a, a softer increase in, in sales prices, um, but there's been, um, a lot of optimism um, easing since um, July. So it's not all doom and gloom. And another bright side is its effect on M&A strategy. Um, luckily, hopefully, um, if you're in media um, tech, you're not gonna be really affected. Um, especially technology such as drones, artificial, artificial intelligence, robotics, um, privacy, you're gonna be in a very uh, good position. Um, so one, if you're in tech, the good news is you're not gonna be affected that much right now. So I wanted to get your, um, a pulse of what you're thinking based on um, what you've heard so far. And I think we have a question um, for you guys. So if you can start thinking about, you know, what you know on what we know about the economic outlook, how are you going to adjust your marketing budget? And we're going to get into how, how you can start rethinking it, but I, I'm curious where you are right now.
Yeah, so most of you aren't sure. Um, so let's let's move on. Um, so one of the things that um, you we've all learned from previous recessions is that the best approach um, to marketing is to maintain your investment, um, to build your brand. And if, if you do maintain that um, investment, you're going to reap the re rewards in, in recovery. Um, in the past, businesses that invest during recession recover three times faster than their counterparts. Um, <clears throat> however, because this, is, this economic slump is driven by a pandemic rather than a purely economic event, um, the impact is going to be felt felt in multiple areas. Um, it's not only going to be demand, it's, it's also supply side. Um, and many brands aren't actually going to be able to deliver their product or services. Um, and so it's, it's pretty clear that some companies, for some companies, maintaining your, your spend isn't going to be um, an option. So let's figure out whether or not where you should land. Um, in a traditional um, recession, you would think about um, segmentation a little bit differently. So you're going to, you would be moving away from democratic, demographic like over 40, new parent, middle income, and, and lifestyle um, segmentations like, you know, green, um, yoga, um, and really focusing on the psycholo psychological segmentation um, that your customers will be taking into consideration. Um, that segmentation can go all the way from, you know, slam on the brakes um, segmentation for those that feel the most vulnerable and hardest hit financially. Um, this group would just stop um, spending and um, decrease or substitute um, purchases. Um, it's not all lower income customers that, that fit into this category. It's, it's really high anxiety um, customers, and those could be in any income level, um, particularly when the health of your um, customer is at stake. Um, you'll have uh, pain, but patient consumers, um, they're optimistic about the long term, but they're um, conserving in the short term. Um, they, they'll economize in most areas, but um, they're going to be um, a little cautious. Um, comfortably well off, um, feel secure about their ability to ride it out. Um, and they're going to consume at, you know, near um, previous levels, but they're going to be a little bit more sub, um, selective about how they spend. And then the live for today segment um, is unconcerned. Um, they're not concerned about their savings. Um, they're going to continue to um, act the way they were before, um, except they may, may extend timetables for um, major purposes purchases. Um, given that we have uh, an added dimension to this recession, um, which is health and um, the ability to congregate, um, this recession has an extra emotional layer um, that we haven't seen, you know, since really the Spanish flu. Um, this recession is expected to be deeper than previous ones. Um, it's and the shape of recovery is going to be a lot harder because we don't know what recovery will look like. Um, we don't know how reopenings are, are going to be working as we're going to see a cycle of repeated surges. Um, so investing in recovery is going to be really tricky. Um, and we're going to have to balance, you know, cash on hand um, versus growth. And so one of the things that you should think of if, if you're advertising is really think on making changes based on um, demand versus 
supply shortage shortages. So um, what I what I I'm thinking about here are are two categories of, of businesses, one in growth categories where the pandemic has actually been a positive thing for businesses. This is anything from alcohol and pharma, privacy, um, virtual collaboration, telecom delivery. Um, these businesses have actually benefited um, from the pandemic. pandemic. Um, and then you have challenged businesses like restaurants, gyms, education, airlines, um, retail, or brick and mortar retail and and tourism. So, you know, while most people are focused on uh, drops in demand, um, you should consider whether um, both supply and demand, because if you can't serve, uh, if you can't serve um, your customers, you shouldn't be um, advertising. Um, and so, you know, in in most categories, whether it's growth or challenged, you know, we recommend advertising um, at some point. Um, if you're in growth categories, you're going to want to increase your adver advertising, um, not only because advertising costs drop during recession, um, but also because your com competitors are going to be increasing at advertising. So you have to maintain that share of voice. Um, but if you're in the challenge categories, you know, you have to advertise selectively, um, really focus on seasonality um, because, you know, you want, once you lose market share and once you lose um, awareness, it, it takes a while to, to recover from that. Um, but if you can't serve your customers, you have to be transparent with them. Um, if, if you're, if you're going to continue to have a voice in the market, you need to make sure that you're explaining to them what, what's happening. Um, and that's transparency is all you can do. Your, your customers are, are there for you. Um, they're rooting for you um, just as, as much as, as, as you are rooting for them. Um, and whatever you do in terms of cutting advertising, if, if that's what you're going to be doing, um, make sure you don't cut too hard. Again, um, once your awareness, share voice is, is in decline, it's, it can be pretty hard to reverse. But ad, advertising isn't the only way you can maintain awareness. Um, so for, for brands that are having to go dark during this period, um, you should use other level, levers. Um, if you're collecting your customer data, um, use that customer, customer data. Find different ways that you can use your first party data to, um, for referrals, um, repeat, repeat um, purchases, um, just staying in contact with them. Um, customers that, I mean, co companies that focus on the customer experience are going to be growing. Um, and especially whenever the downturn shifts, um, you're going to position yourself to just shoot up. Um, so if you can't focus on selling, focus on increasing satisfaction. Um, you can also use your owned assets um, to communicate to your um, customers, you know, pack, it could include packaging, um, websites, social media. You can use those, those, those um, items to um, communicate to your customers. And um, while they may be lower in terms of cost, um, they may be higher in terms of resources like time. Um, you can also use your PR and your partnerships to help drum up um, word of mouth together. Um, and again, focus on your key seasonality. Um, if, you, if you have to advertise, cut your advertising, think about advertising in bursts. So whatever advertising that you're doing is focused on sales and not just on brand. So now that we've talked a little bit about recessions, I wanted to get 
another um, your thoughts on your marketing budget after learning a little bit about um, how companies have navigated recessions in the past. I believe we have uh, another poll for you guys. So what are you thinking now? Are you thinking about changing your budget, um, reinvesting your budget, or decreasing it? Well, I think most of you are starting to um, find some ideas on what you want to do. So what's important is that you um, pivot with your customer. Your customer is changing how they're, if it, your B2B, how they're conducting business, if your B2C, um, how they're living their lives, literally. Um, and you need to adjust your strategies based on these changing patterns. Um, and given the rapid changes that we're seeing, um, you have to start detecting um, ch changing patterns in de um, demand and supply early and start ask answering the following question questions. Um, where is the demand spiking? Where is it cratering? Um, and how is it different based on geography or demographic? So you can start putting together um, some bundling. On the bright side, you know, this is the perfect time to really um, strengthen the foundational aspects of your marketing program. Um, if you're in a growth category, this is time where you increase advertising um, you can spend your time really focusing your brand and making sure that um, you're consistently executing across all of your marketing channels. If you're struggling um, or in a challenge category, um, now's the time for you to start thinking of creative ways to redirect your resources um, and to serve the changing needs of your um, customer, both in the short term and the long term. Um, and so one of the first things that you should think about is continue nurturing the customers or um, prospects that you already have a conversation with. You've already spent the time, the money to bring them into your funnel. Keep on nurturing them. Um, address, you know, what the current situation that we're all in um, and put a lot of effort into really building that relationship. Um, let the continuously be transparent, authentic. Let your customers know how your company is handling the challenge um, and showcase your adaptability and your values um, so that you can create that like one-on-one -on -one connection with them. Um, so as you're starting to think about, you know, how, how do I become more effective? How do I become more um, effective, build that relationship? Um, if you're not tracking your performance metrics, now's the time to start. Um, start tracking as much as you can um, around what you can control. Um, and when you start tracking it, Start tracking your wins, and then if you're if something isn't working, just quickly pivot, um, and then start thinking about your positioning, um, because demand's going to come back, and how you pivot here is going to affect your ability to recover whenever demand increases. Um, stay close to your customers. If, if, you're, if you can't sell to them, um, call them, email them. Um, you can 
start serving content, create contests where they can build relationships with you. Um, really start asking them about the competition um, and re reassess your strengths and weaknesses against the competition. Use this time um, to really build your foundation. Um, start shaping your customer sen sentiment um, and you know, make sure that your innovation programs are actually paying off, that it's not um, you know, innovation theater. Um, and make sure that you can quickly pivot, um, that you can have those early warning signals where you, un you're, you have that communication with your clients and you can move at a turn of a dime whenever they're ready to, to move. And so if your customer is in a holding pattern or your supply is lagging, um, focus your efforts by mapping your product against the um, the value that it is um, providing your clients. In some cases, the value um, that you're providing your clients have, has shifted massively um, because of the pandemic and the lockdown. So you're gonna have to think about, A, how do you pivot short-term, and B, how do you pivot um, long-term? And, you know, even if it's not changing your product, maybe it's changing the positioning and, and merchandising, um, where you're exceeding um, expectations, um, moving away from areas where your product may not be of value to customers in today, but in three months, it's gonna be back to um, high value. So really start considering how your, your business delivers against how your clients' needs have changed. And so, you know, a number of you are thinking about cutting costs and, and cutting your marketing budget. And it's really important to take a, a strategic approach to expense management. Um, when you're cut, cutting costs, you have to protect the core, um, your, your differentiators, um, your brand. You have to make sure that you're not sacrificing there. Um, you have to safeguard against your potential competitive threat. Um, while you're looking inward to cut costs, follow what your competition is doing. Follow how they're um, changing their cost structure. Um, and position for whatever comes next. So as you're starting to cut costs, cutting, um, maybe changing your product, make sure that you're, you're, you're looking forward at the same time. Um, and wherever possible, when you do have to cut, um, see how much you can postpone into the future, um, reduce just by becoming more efficient by automation, um, and sometimes just purely eliminating. For example, um, in-person events probably isn't the right um, time to do that. Um, and so one of the things that I like to talk about whenever we're talking about cutting costs is, you know, what's the difference between busy versus effective? And a lot of marketing teams are doing a lot um, in many channels, lots of campaigns, and they don't really have time to, to understand what works. And so now is actually a really good time for marketing teams, if you wanna look at the bright side, um, as companies are starting to do furloughs, maybe they're shortening the work week, um, people are becoming more productive um, and they're, they're being forced to cut out um, the busy stuff. Um, and so one of the things that I like to, to say is our clients, the ones that were able to pivot very quickly um, within the first week of the shutdown, is the ones that had a really strong vision mission, the ones that had cultures that were built on values. Um, those companies were able to pivot um, in a week from fully um, in, in office to full remote work, um, changing how they worked, how they delivered their products, how they delivered their services. And it was amazing to watch how quickly 
um, they were able to pivot. So, you know, if you have to cut all of your costs, for example, um, vision and mission is actually a really good way to invest. Um, it doesn't take a lot of money. It just takes a lot of time and effort. And so what I wanted to understand now, we have another polling question for you, is um, now's a really crit critical time. Um, and how are you, what's going to be your top priority in the next, let's say, three months? Great. Um, staying close to your customers. Yeah. Um, most of you are going to be staying close to, to your customers. Um, you're also going to be start looking at your product and, and service and also thinking about your brand. Um, that's great. Great. Um, so with all this talk of cost cutting and economic slumps, um, one of the things that the CFO survey did that um, Gartner did is uh, a lot of these leaders viewed this crisis as an opportunity to emerge stronger, um, especially whenever it's related to product or service innovation. So, um, again, this is a silver lining. Um, so, you know, we, we focus a lot of attention on cutting back, um, which can alleviate your financial stress. But, you know, it's important to be very strategic in, in how far you cut back. Um, cutting back on operations and production will be definitely beneficial from a cost standpoint. Um, but some companies are um, choosing to do just that, to um, prevent further loss. So whatever your cost cutting strategy is, just remember that um, the economy is going to bounce back um, and you need to, whatever you do, you're, you're going to have to be prepared to um, meet your increased demand um, once the, the curve flattens. And so um, one of the things that you should start focusing on is start creating that infrastructure for an agile mindset, um, which means looking forward. Um, start anticipating what areas um, may go back to previous um, pre-COVID um, ways of working. Um, for example, you know, we, we know that remote work is, is here to stay, probably not 100%, but take um, the learnings from that to increase your productivity, whether it's um, collaboration tools, um, planned unstructured time to increase creativity um, and innovation, and you know transparency both internally and externally with your customer. Um, build um, dynamic and resilient strategies um, that can receive market feedback and evolve. Um, so start thinking about creating shorter strategic timeframes um, so you can start making agile decisions and tune your company strategy in, in response to market dynamics um, and start building those systems now so you can start um, sensing those early warning um, signals for changing demand patterns um, and, and supply patterns. And so, you know, how do you build one? Um, well, first, you know, you have to have uh, dynamic strategies um, that have early warning signals. Um, and so, you know, one of the signals that 
most companies have, if not all, are the, the lagging indi indicators. Um, this is, you know, your revenue, your profits, performance, your, your marketing funnel. Um, that is your baseline in terms of your early warning signal. But, you know, they are historical looking. You're, you're, you're looking backwards. Um, you also have your current indicators. So, you know, as, as companies evolve, they start adding more metrics. And current innovator indicators include things like NPS, where you take your ter current um, customer segment to set sentiment to look forward um, and predict um, future success. Um, so you have NPS, a marketing engagement. Um, for example, um, SaaS metrics could be, you know, usage um, in terms of lagging indicators, um, retention for lagging indicators, and then for current indicators, you know, customer love and customer attitudes. Um, but in, in addition to these current indicators, you need to build those early warning systems um, so you can sense changing patterns. Um, and those are leading in indicators. And one of the things about leading indicators is, you know, you can't, they're really hard to quantify because it's essentially fantasy. You're, you're kind of predicting, um, we're not really predicting the future, but you're preparing for all possibilities in the future. Um, and it's really about creating qualitative stories um, so you can prepare for them. And um, I'm going to give you a tool that you can use um, that you can start seeing these early warning indicators um, so you can prepare um, because, you know, the, the closer you come to uh, a reality, the, the, the harder it is to change your trajectory. So there's a wonderful book by Rita McGrath. Um, she's a strategy and innovation professor at Columbia Business School. Um, it's called Seeing Around Corners. And she has this um, strategy for um, identifying early warning signals. And you do this by picking, for example, a very early, simple early warning si signal, picking two major uncertainties. Um, mapping them in a two by two matrix um, for eat for the uncertainty being true and the uncertainty being false. Um, then telling a story about each um, intersection and crafting a headline. And then you start building a timeline to that story. So let's go through an example um, very quickly. Um, Let's pick two of the major uncertainties that we have in, in today's world. Um, one is we have an election coming, um, you know, and to make this a very simple um, exercise, we're going to say that the election will determine the outcome. Um, the outcome of the election will de determine the economic policies that we have moving forward. And then on the other side um, is the length of the shutdown. Um, so, you know, either we're going to have a uh, robust recovery and the, um, we're going to see a flattening of the curve, or we're going to have pro prolonged shutdown where we have a cycle of, of um, open and, and closing um, and shutdown. And so once we have these two by two um, matrix, let's start creating a story. So I'm not going to go through every permutation, but here is a potential um, outcome for each of the um, story, each of the uncertainties. And I'm going to focus on this top right-hand um, area, so we're going to dig deep. Uh, so let's consider that we have stakeholder capitalism, um, which means which means that um, we're going to have capitalism where profits are more equally distributed across all stakeholders. And we're going to have a very short 
robust recovery. Um, what this could mean is that we're going to come to a, a return of the post-war consensus on the distribution of, of wealth. Um, middle and lower class families are going to start beginning to recover and um, social goods are going to be made more affordable. And so what we do next is we start thinking about, okay, so what does this mean in my um, time frame that I'm looking at? And what we do is we, we build uh, a time zero event, which is going to be your headline. Um, and what's important here is to separate your preferences from your predictions. Um, and bring in as many people with different points of view so you can have that holistic um, view of all the potential possibilities that, that happen. Um, so what we've called this scenario in your top right-hand side is, you know, boom part two. And we have headlines for each one of them. Um, what we're going to focus on is the U.S. economic model revisits the Great Society. And you can actually, this is, um, you can research and you should research each headline um, and start building your thesis for your um, predictions. And so for each headline, we're going to start building a rendezvous scenario. And this is, these are the facts that you would have to observe um, if we're going to find ourselves in our rendezvous situation, um, which is our, our, our boom part two. Um, and so this was created, Rita McGrath created something like this in April. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're thinking about leading indicators and um, thinking about what the signals are for, and separate them, separating them for, from the noise. Um, and so nine months before our, our time zero event, you know, we're going to, if the scenario were going to happen, we're going to see influential people loudly critiqu critiquing the existing system. Um, we're going to see action by labor and stakeholders, um, and those will be publicly supported. And we're going to have start seeing public support for government safety net programs. Um, six months before our horizon, we're going to start seeing progressive co coalitions cohere around a platform. Um, efforts, by lobby, efforts by lobbyists to maintain the status quo will intensify. And we're going to start seeing increased popularity of government interventions. Three months before our time zero, um, event, we're going to see lawsuits start to settle the gig workers um, as employees. Um, we're going to see progressive candidates being elected on promise of safety nets um, and so on and so forth. And we're going to see a second wave of successfully controlled um, reopenings. And at time zero of our boom part two, um, time zero event, we're going to see lobbyists losing political power, we're going to see safety net programs beginning to get passed, and we're going to see new political players outlining po policies against the power and the privilege of the 1%. So while this is not a prediction, this is just one um, outcome in the possibility of sen scenarios that we should be looking at. Um, and with that, hopefully we, you've gotten uh, uh, some tools in your um, toolkit to start thinking about how you're going to be marketing to your customers, how you're going to be um, adjusting your budget based on the um, economic indicators that we have today, and how you're going to start building those early warning signals into your strategy so you can quickly pivot as you see um, check marks in your predictions becoming true. Christine, thank you so much. Um, we have a few questions in the Q&A that I would love to run by you. How does that sound? Okay, great. 
Um, so we have a question. Do you have any advice for companies targeting banks, more particularly Swiss banks, Canadian banks, or banks perhaps in Hong Kong? How might someone target those banks and speaking to them when it comes to their marketing? So I think it, it depends on what services, service you're providing. So if, if you are providing a service that directly benefits the banks, um, I would focus on contacting their procurement departments. Um, if you're focused on helping your banks reach um, their B2C customers, um, then it would be reaching out to their um, marketing strategy teams, um, business development teams to partner with them. It's a product actually, very specifically. It's a product. So yeah, um, when you say product, it's like a technology to help Im improve con efficiency or privacy. Yes, Daniela is letting us know. Yes, it is. Okay, so if it's if it's specifically around um, efficiency and privacy, if if it's for example a privacy um, product, I would reach directly out to the CISO um, or the CIO. Um, that would be my main target for that particular product. Great, thank you. Daniela, thank you for your questions. If anyone else has questions, please let us know. Put them in the chat or the Q&A function. And while you are listening to some of Christine's wisdom and answers to these questions, take a few moments and fill out our survey so Christine knows how she has done and, and NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center can provide you with more programming like this one to meet your needs currently. That link is in the chat. Thank you all so much. So we have some interesting questions from an attendee, I think specifically around the metrics that you had referenced. Um, they're wondering about the, the sharp downturn, your mention of a sharp downturn. What are some of the metrics that you feel are indicating this? Um, and has this been factored into some of the stats that you've been sharing? Yeah, so um, specifically we are talking about um, the PMI. Um, index. Um, so that is a composite index um, using, I'm going to get very tech, using data from over 400 purchasing executives um, representing 20 industries, and it also corresponds to their contribution to the GDP. Um, so it's a very specific index. Um, it looks at month over month growth. Um, so that is a good indicator. Um, I also think that if you're going to look at other indicators, employment is going to be very important, especially if you're in B2C and not necessarily um, your typical employment. You, you have to also consider um, people that have been out of work and have um, quit looking for jobs um, because that index if will be a key indicator of a drastic um, downturn. I think one of the things that you know I'm particularly worried about is if it's a, a prolonged um, pandemic. Um, right now, B two B isn't as effective as B two C. Um, if we start seeing a sharp downturn due to unemployment um, and um, protracted um, cost cutting from consumers, that's eventually going to trickle in up into um, B2B. So I think those are those the PMI index, um, which does both services and manufacturing and um, employment indexes, I think will be two um, major um, economic indicators that you can look at to kind of give you a, a heads up on where the economy is headed. Great, Christine. Thank you so much. I think we have time maybe for one or two more questions. So attendees, please submit your questions in the Q&A function. Um, we have a question from 
someone running an early stage startup having to do with their customers. So in the midst of um, this downturn, how, how might we stay aligned best? What are your top two suggestions for staying aligned best to nurturing those, ne those leads? Um, whether they're leads within our current ecosystem or new leads? Um, well, I think that really depends on, it depends on your product and your, and your customer um, and how you've been interacting with them in the past. So if you're, I'll just say, let's say you're B2B and you have um, leads that you've been nurturing, I would encourage you to, to call them, um, to email them, to start putting together virtual events, um, whether it's a wine tasting, a sake tasting, you could have um, food pairings. You, there's, there's fun things that you can do um, with your leads that um, would start building that relationship, even if it's sending them a book um, for them to, to read during the downturn, um, a book of um, deep thoughts. It could be a book of um, an optimistic book, a journaling book. Um, there's lots of things that you can do to, to, to reach out to your leads that are B2B. Um, and consumer, I would do two things. You know, it, it all depends on your advertising spend. I'm going to take the advertising spend out of the equation. Um, I would use social media and um, email, a combination of those two, because those are the cheapest in terms of um, cost, while, but they're also the most time consuming. Um, but use that to start building relationships with your clients, whether it's, you know, you can do contests. Um, you can share how, you know, your, your product is being used at home. Um, there's lots of fun things that you can do to just start having a conversation. Christine, thank you so much. That was an excellent response. Let's see. So I think we are wrapped up with the questions. Okay. Any final words of wisdom to share before we end our session today, Christine? You know, I think now, especially if you're an opportunity right now, I think use this time as an opportunity to really position yourself um, for the growth that's going to happen. Um, I think you're going to be very well positioned whenever the reopening start happening and whenever the, the curve flattens. It's going to be, you know, a, a tough next few months, but um, you have the strategies that you need um, to weather the storm. And once you do, you're going to be in a really good position to really grow once um, the clouds are lifted. Beautiful words of wisdom. Thank you so much. For all of you of still with us, Thanks. thank you. Yes. Please fill out the survey in the chat. Christine and NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center would love to hear your thoughts about this webinar and others. And Christine, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to our community, to share your insights and wisdom, and to set such a great overview, overview for all of us. On behalf of the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center and everyone in attendance today, we sincerely thank you. And.